Well, a good Saturday to you. Thanks for finding us here at Fox 26. I'm meteorologist John Dawson. Let's dive into the tropical update. There's plenty out there to talk about within the Atlantic Basin, but nothing is threatening at the moment. So we're all glad to give that report. So we'll start with the Gulf and the Caribbean. Quiet, still quiet. And that is another good thing that we like to be able to report. The Atlantic, on the other hand, has several different things kind of happening at the moment. First thing we've got is Gabrielle, which is currently a tropical storm. And then also we have another tropical wave, a very disorganized system that's also being monitored way out in the Atlantic, more uh, closer to the coast of Africa than it is really even in the middle of the Atlantic. But let's start with Gabrielle, since that's our, our sort of feature that we've got going right now officially as a tropical cyclone, and uh, it is a tropical storm. It is a strong tropical storm with maximum sustained winds at 65 miles an hour. So again, we're using the 4 p.m. update here on Saturday afternoon that we'll be looking at. And anytime within the next 24 hours, this is expected to become a hurricane because again, we're already at 65 mile an hour winds and maybe even as early as the 10 p.m. update on Saturday, this could be classified as a hurricane. But Gabrielle right now, tropical storm, and it's continuing to do what we expect it to do and want it to do, and that is basically stay out in the Atlantic. Now, the first, the folks in Bermuda are going to, of course, be watching it a little bit. That's the closest land that's going to really come into contact here, and it should stay to the east as we look at this forecast track, but more organization and strengthening is expected to be happening. We could even have 100 or 105 mile an hour wind here by the time we get into Monday or Tuesday as we again expect things to strengthen somewhat. This would become our second hurricane that we've had in the Atlantic Basin here in 2025 and generally a similar path that Aaron took, which was the other hurricane, just that looping and staying out in the Atlantic and not really coming up too close to the U.S. Aaron made closer, uh, was closer over to the U.S., but this is exactly how we like to see tropical systems go just kind of do what they need to do in the fact that they're using up uh, important heat in the atmosphere. They're transferring some of that energy from our southern latitudes to our northern latitudes, and they're not really bothering a whole lot of people in the process. That's kind of what we like to see happen. In addition to Gabrielle, there is another tropical wave that's out in the Atlantic, and it's more or less in this neighborhood here. We'll just kind of sort of say this is the general idea of where we're looking at it. You would want to think that it's out here, but it's not that far out yet. It's still much closer to the coast, and so it's going to need 48 hours at least before the environment is more favorable. This yellow shaded area here is kind of where things are more favorable, meaning the the the, uh, the air is not as dry. There's not as much upper level winds. This is where something could form a little bit more likely. So once that wave gets to this point, then it can kind of move through some of the same area that Gabrielle already moved through and perhaps form into its own tropical system. And one of our computer models kind of picks up on that just a little bit, not overly favorable that it that it's there, but you can kind of see that in the GFS. So first of all, this is Gabrielle. So this is a forecast model that's going to show Gabrielle. Gabrielle going to do what we talked about, but then you see kind of coming up here uh, in the south of, of uh, Gabrielle, where that yellow area was a little bit of rotation trying to show right here. This is that tropical wave. Would it have enough organization that it would become a tropical system? Kind of hard to tell. This is pretty early, but again, still monitoring this and it looks to still follow that same idea of not going into the Caribbean, not going into the Gulf, but staying out in the Atlantic. And this is the end of the week on Friday. So this is a seven days out. Lots of questions on whether this would actually turn in anything. Not all the models are even on board with what's happening there. So right now we've got Gabrielle. It's going down as a tropical storm, but soon within the next 24 hours, we'll be able to change that into the second hurricane that we've seen. And we've also got that other tropical wave that we're thinking if it were to develop. And remember, it's only a 20% chance right now over a seven day period. But I really do expect those numbers to increase as we go a couple more days. Uh, that could end up being Umberto. 
Toronto is kind of what we're looking at overall. So we still have time here in the hurricane season. You know, we've always talked about this peak of September the 10th. Well, it's not an even peak. It's 40% of the activity before the peak, 60% activity after the peak. Again, this is just looking at the history books, but the way things are shaping up this year, this, this seems to be a little bit sort of skewed even further down to where maybe we're peaking right now and we still have some season left. Technically, we run through November the 30th, but we don't really expect activity to stay that long, but we could certainly see some more storms continuing to stay regularly happening. Those waves coming off the coast of Africa a little bit later here in another week or two, we'll probably be watching the Caribbean and the Gulf a little bit closer for possibilities of development. That's just kind of how it goes. It just seems like we're a little bit sort of uh, behind the schedule of what a very historic season would histor historic statistically would look like. So we just kind of keep an eye on things. And that's why we're here. That's why we're keeping our tropical updates. We'll be here every day, a little bit after 4 p.m. Central Time, bringing you the latest on what's happening in the tropics.